Okay, I think we've been talking for an hour, so we'll kind of start to... We've got one sort of big question, then we've got some quick questions. Okay. Um, what was I going to ask? Brian, you received what you memorably described as the yellow card in 2015 uh, yeah. um, when you, you had uh, cancer, yeah. and you had mentioned, and you're now thankfully uh, beaten it and are, are, right. are in remission. Yeah. What was I going to say? How has your outlook and attitude changed since? And delighted to... Well, I think I remember 29th of July 2015 when my wife and I were saying should we go out for a dinner or should we just go to Marks and Spencer's and buy something, we'll cook some stuff in-house and then Paul, my surgeon, comes in and said, uh, if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's a duck, you've got cancer. Um, and how that pivotal moment changed my whole life and how everything else I was thinking about that might have been a challenge or a problem was subservient to this. It all, like snow off a dike in a warm day, disappeared. And I just had this one focus. And it changed my life into what is it I'm really trying to do? Why am I here? So it was quite a philosophical debate. We had lots of, shed lots of tears because Paul said, I don't want to operate uh, until I see how far this has spread. So we've got about three weeks of different tests to see what it is, which was three weeks of preparing for death. So that did focus my mind on I thought, I don't believe you can live forever, and that's an obvious, we will all die one day, but I believed I was away in the future, whereas I thought, this could happen, this could be round the corner, and that led to, I think I'm impatient by nature, but it led to a pretty impatient environment, so if we want to do a particular thing, well, let's do that next month, or let's do that this week, or let's do that this afternoon. And that's both personal and in business, because why would you wait? And uh, it's the old philosophy when you're young, you keep your good jumper for a Sunday. <laughs> you say, well, what happens if you die on the Saturday? You didn't get to wear your good jumper. <laughs> Sounds a bit bizarre, but so it's why wait for these things? Why not just deliver them now? So that's led to me in business as I do a lot of things with my wife with a flip chart because we love it and drew up to would you, you enjoy like a flip chart <laughs> <laughs> and we looked at all the things I enjoyed and all the things I didn't enjoy which are different from what you can and can't do because you can do lots of things but that doesn't mean to say you enjoy them because some things are deemed in your own mind to be necessities and I looked at I love business rather like other people might like physical exercise golf both of which I like anyway but um I like business and I love growing businesses because it's great fun. And what part of it do I really like? So I segmented all the different parts and said, what I want to do if we get the second chance is I want to be involved in lots of businesses, not too many because you have a capacity, but enough to get enjoyment. And if someone says to me, I see you're still working, I say, well, um, Work is only a classification that you make because you've associated it with pay. If you don't get paid for something at playing golf, it's not work. But if you got paid for it, would it be work? You've decided to classify it as work. I enjoy going into businesses because it's good fun. Whether there's a commercial arrangement or not is immaterial. It's how you think about it in your mind. So it's changed my mindset to there's no such thing as work. There's obligations that you have, things you have to do and things you want to do. And obligations are more likely to fall into the work category, whereas things you like doing, whether you're paid or not, don't fall into that category. So they're things to enjoy. So that's been a fundamental shift with a backbone of impatience to do lots of things. And now you're, you're working, have you got your, I think the, all the, the different activities you mentioned, we mentioned at the beginning of the, of the interviews, so you're in quite a good space now with the, the things you're doing. And... Uh, probably a good capacity. We're involved with four companies and they're all going through some tremendous opportunities at the moment. So that's a bit like having um, four kids and they're all crying at the same time. Which <laughs> one do you run to? So you've got to be careful. However, I've segmented in my mind the priorities and who needs what I can give the most and where I get the most excitement. And I'm a bit selfish in as much as I'm drawn to where I get the most excitement. More often than not, but I recognise there are people who need me and I get a bit of excitement from them. So I've managed to balance that. There's a finite capacity. You, 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 cannot, um, you cannot do justice to a very large portfolio yeah. and get the enjoyment back. 